Hello, it's Jesse here with another episode of DIY Music as I'm driving my trash to the Trash Pagoda. Um, sorry I haven't posted in a while, just been super busy with a million things. Uh, but I had a topic come up that I wanted to discuss uh, for you guys, uh, and that is shopping for music gear online and researching music gear online. Because um, I don't know if you realize this, but most of the coolest music gear out there in the world is never going to be found at your local guitar center, Sam Ash, Mars Music, whatever. Even your local music stores. Like, anything cool, inventive, different, out there uh, is usually not going to be stocked by a brick and mortar music retailer because when they buy something to have it go in their store, they're taking a risk and they need to be able to move that product. So they are always going to buy things that they have a reasonable amount of certainty are going to move and make them money. So normal guitars and basses and drums and all the standard things uh, that most people are going to want. and. Um, the uh, smartest, in my opinion, retailers seem to focus on lower end instruments, starter instruments, the resale market, uh, and kind of only have you know a few high end instruments here and there for the random person that wants one. Uh, because most people coming to a brick and mortar to buy something are going to be beginner players. Um, and they have the the greatest likelihood of moving that product and not taking a loss on it. So, that being said, I'm into really weird out there stuff. Uh, I love inventive, different things, um, and because of that, uh, I tend to only be able to find what I want or am interested in on the internet. And even more so than that, most of the things that I find and I'm like, whoa, that's awesome, tend to be comp like discontinued, not made anymore, vintage, um, because there's a lot of cool stuff that happened uh, a while back in the music gear market, and I need to take my trash, so let's continue this in a second. Uh, for example, um, something that I have experimented with is having <coughs> keys on a guitar, uh, like on a piano, to strike the strings and uh, try to make my own prototypes. <coughs> Didn't get very far with it. It's mechanically very complex to make a keyboard mechanism. But then, you know, through poking around the internet, I found, um, you know, there's a Hammer Jammer, which is from like the 90s, 2000s. Uh, that's that idea. And then I found this Keytar, T-A-A-R. Uh, it's this vintage thing from for longer ago, like the 60s, something like that, 50s. Um, I'll put information in the box below on that. But and, uh, and that was pretty much exactly like what I had intended to build. And it existed. It just doesn't exist anymore. No one's currently making them. So you gotta poke around eBay, Reverb.com. You can find a lot of this vintage gear um, available for sale, um, but you're literally only ever going to find it on the internet. Um, and beyond that, you're also going to get better deals than buying local um, from musician's friend uh, who does frequent sales or even uh, buying online through Guitar Center. You're going to get much better pricing. And then if you have one local, the benefit is. If you don't like it, you can just take it back to the store and, and uh, then you don't have to deal with returning it through the mail. Um, but yeah, so I have found that 90% uh, of the really cool stuff out there is only ever going to be findable online. And of course the bummer of that is, is you can't try things out. And so, you know, I have accepted that myself. I know that uh, you know watching YouTube reviews and reading stuff about 
things and hearing sound samples is only going to get you so far um, and eventually you just have to take the leap and uh, buy it and so I, I resell a lot of things because they're not what I thought they were or it just doesn't really work out as I expected uh, for instance I just uh, recently <clears throat> got a, uh, a Roland living room digital piano the FP30 uh, for my my living room for my family and I to use and um, speakers were just quiet and muddy and struggling to put out a reasonable volume level and not having a key cover you had to put this you know weird spandex thing over it and just looked yucky and then we had to start using external speakers because the built-in ones were so bad and that looked terrible and there was no place to set them on the keyboards anyways long story short I'm taking the hit to uh, pay the shipping return fee to craft music in order to upgrade to something different but similar um, and why because I didn't have an FP30 local that I could try out so there was no way to to know those things ahead of time um, other things I could have figured out didn't have a line in port for connecting a phone and things like that so I mean it was partly my fault but uh, the point being you know you buy some random crazy homemade MIDI controller or um, you know some out there exotic instrument that you can only get online you're probably not gonna be able to try one of those locally and that's just the nature of of the thing when you are going to um, foray into more exotic and interesting you know music gear spaces than the average consumer is interested in so like I said I've accepted it and if you want to you know be out there and, and get cool things you know vintage guitars and organ bass pedals that are MIDI capable you know all the random type of stuff that, that I really get into you know just uh, you got to be brave and figure out how to how to pay for it to uh, just buy things and then um, you have to have a method and an approach set up to be able to resell for as, as little a loss as possible. Uh, I've recently started really loving Reverb.com. I'm getting much better resale on there than I have previously in other, other places like eBay or Craigslist. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so if you, if you want to uh, explore and try out you know, new and different things, you know, go for it. And uh, just accept that there's going to be a, a certain amount of financial loss involved. Um, but the way I look at it, it's like a rental fee for having the thing for whatever period of time you do. Um, you know, but just be aware of if it's a current product. You know, is a when might a new one come out? Um, you know, and make sure to sell before the new one comes out, so that your resale isn't negatively impacted. Um, Lots of little things like that. Uh, just you know, be smart about it. Um, but if you want to, uh, if you really want to try out that that cool out there stuff, you just gotta pull the trigger, be brave, take the leap. And uh, I'm here at work. Got to go in and do my job. So take care. Uh, signing out. Jesse Bond, DIY Music. Peace. <laughs>